words of power because we are kings and our words matter. Are you a human being? God has shown you grace through Jesus Christ. You can receive it by faith. It's by grace and through faith. So that not just Abraham's descendants. Just imagine how hard it will be for us to get that blessing if it was only to Abraham's descendants. God made it by grace and faith so that we can all get it. I believe you're
kingdom of God is so different from the world. I mean, there is a big difference from the world. And, and the Christian preaching is about uh, highlighting these differences. So let me read to you Romans chapter 4. Let me read to you from verse 1 onwards. What then shall we say that Abraham our father has found according to the flesh? Now, that verse, I must simplify it again. <laughs> It says, what, what shall we say that Abraham our father, it calls Abraham our father, he's also our father because we are uh, people that have the same faith as Abraham and we have the promises of Abraham through Christ, we are the recipients of Abraham's blessing and so on. So he says, what shall we say that Abraham our father has found according to the flesh? Let me simplify it. He says, what has Abraham achieved by going the world's way. The world's way is, whatever good you get, you get by working. By your works only, you get whatever good you can get. So it says, your father Abraham has not achieved anything according to the flesh. He has not gotten any blessing. Here is a man known for his blessing. Abraham's blessing, the Bible talks about. How did he get all those blessings? Not by the world's methods, he says. Then how did he get it? Look at verse 2. For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God, because he was not justified by works, you see. Verse 3. For what does the scripture say? How did Abraham become the recipient of such great blessings? What does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. In other words, not works by faith. Abraham got everything that he got. All the blessings of Abraham became his. He appropriated it. He had it. Not by works but by faith. Works is the world's way. Faith is God's way. It's very simple. Faith is God's way. So you want to achieve anything in the kingdom of God. You want to receive anything from God. You, the first thing you need to understand is faith. You need to understand the operation of faith, how faith works. Only then you can receive everything that God has prepared for you. If you don't understand faith, you cannot get anything from God. Why is it by faith? Why everything that you can receive from God in this new life is by faith and faith only. No other system will work. No other method will work. All that you are used to in this world will not work. Only faith will work. Why? Read verse 13 onwards. For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Now we have dealt with the promise of being heir to the world before. But let's look at it from this angle. The promise that he would be the heir to the world. A lot of people have a problem with that. My God, you know. One man said to me, my whole preaching is that we don't want the world. We want heaven. But here God says, the promise that he'll be the heir to the world. Some people are saying, Lord, give me heaven. <laughs> We're singing here, heaven is mine. But he's saying, I gave you the earth and you lost it. Your granddaddy, Adam, took it and gave it in the hands of Adam. I mean, I gave it in the hands of the devil. And the devil has got it. He's now known as the God of this world. And he's ruling over everything. He's exercising authority over the whole realm of this world. But I have given man the world. You ought to be the Lord and master over the world. You have to be the ruler over the world. I wanted you to be the king. I wanted you to rule the world. Dictate terms and dominate the world. I gave it in your hands, but you lost it. And redemption is all about how God is giving the world back to man. That is why the promise to Abraham was about not just giving one and a half grounds. Not about this blessing or that blessing. Not about blessing here, a little bit blessing. No, it's the whole world. <laughs> Why? The, what man lost was the whole world. What redemption brings back to man is the whole world. It's just mind-boggling. And here we have Christians. Everybody in the world is taking everything. Christians have nothing. They're waiting for heaven, you know. 
they, are, they, are, they, they believe that the world is a bad place. We should just get out of it as quick as possible. And they're always against this world. They don't want this world. They dislike the world. They want to go from this world. They want to rapture, get raptured from this world. And they want to be rid of this world. But look at God. God so loved the world. He sent his son into the world. He lived in the world. And then he died on a cross in the world. He shed his blood in the world. He was dead and buried in this world. He was raised again in this world. He went back to the father. And you think, uh, you know, he's going to stay there. He says, no, I'm soon coming back. <laughs> Hello. I spoil the show for some people. <laughs> Please understand, my friend. Redemption is real redemption. Redemption is not a joke. God wants you to repossess everything that Adam lost on your behalf. God wants you to repossess it. You see, what belonged to us, Adam sold it to the devil, gave it off to the devil. And Jesus came to get it back and give it back to me. I must acknowledge that. If you will only understand this truth, then I will tell you, you will find a big change in your life. You will start possessing. One thing after the other, you will start possessing, taking, because you will look at the world and you'll say, this world belongs to me. I am the man, the officer here. I have the authority. I have the power. I rule here. I have been given authority. See, this is how God made it. So, look at this promise now. For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not Abraham. So, this promise about heir, being heir of the world is not something abnormal, you know. It's very, very, uh, very reasonable. That's what was lost. That's what is given. The promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law but through the righteousness of faith. Now, being the heir of this world is not going to be achieved by the worldly system. It is going to be achieved through faith. Only by faith you can become the heir of this world. <laughs> See, this is the thing. This is why Christian people are not able to progress any further. They get stuck, you know, because they are used to this worldly system. I'll be good. I'll do this. I'll do that. What do you want me to do? You know, they're expecting a big list here. Remember, they came and asked Jesus after he fed the 5,000, you know, they came to Jesus and he said, you strive for that which perishes, but I am the bread of life. I have come to give the bread of life and so on. And then they said, what should we do to get that? They wanted a big list. What should we do to get that? And he shocked them by saying, believe on the one whom God has sent. They said, is that all? Boy, we have better religion. They'll give you two, three, four page list. There are religions that will give you 200 page list also of what to do. And you say, what I must do to get this bread of life so that I may never hunger again is to just believe on the one whom God has sent. Is that all? It looks too cheap and it's like, it looks like it's nothing. But that's all it is. It is by faith. It is by faith. See, their question is, what should I do? God's answer is, just believe on him whom God has sent. Why believe on him? Because he has done everything. So you have nothing left to do. Just believe on him whom God has sent. Amen. That's all. Hello. See, the religion, always, religion is always like that. What must I do? They are pleased with the list if you give them. One man said to me, your preaching doesn't sound like Christian preaching at all. <laughs> no list, no burden. In fact, you come with a burden, you get off all the burden and you go home free, you know. He's used to having burdens put on him. <laughs> Every time he went, I guess. But that is what Christian preaching is. People are always asking for a list. God says there's no list because there's nothing to do. Right? Remember, God made Adam, I mean, God made uh, Adam the last thing on the sixth day. Right? Sixth day, he was created. He was the last creation. And at the end of the sixth day, see, seventh day starts at the end of the sixth day, usually, evening to the next evening. 
So last item of creation was Adam. Adam said, Lord, what's the program? What should I do? God said, rest. <laughs> you mean to say I have nothing to do? Nothing to do. Because I have done everything. Amen. You simply understand that. <laughs> you simply understand that. Enter into the rest. I'm going to rest because there's nothing more to do. You rest because there's nothing you can do. Then what do I do? Just sit down and meditate on the love of God. What he has done for you. Amen. What he has made ready for you. That's all. See? By faith. It is not by works. It is by faith. How are you going to become the heir of the what should I do? Well, <laughs> meditate. <laughs> Take the time to meditate on the word of God. Before crossing Jericho, Jesus, God says to Joshua, let this book not depart out of your mouth. You know, observe to do according to all that is written therein. Meditate on it so that you will observe to do according to all that is written therein. Then you will have, make your way prosperous. Then you will have good success. Now there's a big wall, big army, chariots, horses. You would expect God to say, get your guns ready, you know. Get your men, you know, ready, put on the uniforms and your helmets, where's your stuff, you know. God didn't say anything like that. <laughs> because God says, hey, I'm going to be going in front of you and fight the battle for you. Amen. Nothing for you to do. <laughs> It is too unbelievable, so what you do is meditate until you start believing it. Meditate on how I'm going to do it and how I can do it and how good I am and how great I am. Meditate upon that. Let this book not depart out of your mouth. So it's by faith. How are you going to become the heir of the world? By faith. Now listen to this. Then in, in, in verse 16, it continues. Therefore, it is of faith. Now, it's talking, it's going to talk about why it is by faith. It's very important. Why it's by faith? Why it's not by any, any other means? It says, it is of faith that it might be according to grace. Huh? Let me first cover this and then go to the rest. It's by faith because it's by grace. It can only be by faith because it's by grace. Whatever is given by grace can be received only by faith. If, every, if something is by grace, then the way to get it is to re receive it by faith. There is nothing you can do about it. Because grace is the favor of God which bestows upon the undeserving everything. So grace is where God gives. What is faith? Faith is where man takes. Grace is what God does. Faith is what you must show your response to what God has done. So if it's by faith, if it's by grace, then it must be by faith. Since possessing the whole world is grace, it's God's grace that has given it to you through the cross of Calvary, taking it is by faith. Because it is by grace, it is by faith. Now why is it by faith? I told you because it's by grace, but there's another reason, he says. Look at this. So that the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Why it's by faith? Because why is, it by, why is it given by grace and received by faith? Why this system, not any other system? Because all the seed can receive the promise of not only those who are Abraham's physical descendants, but to all those who are of the faith of Abraham, we come under that category. Not just to those who are the physical descendants of Abraham, but to all those who are of the faith of Abraham. You got Abraham's faith, then you are an heir of the world. You can be, uh, you can be anything. You can be Indian, American, British, you know, African, uh, South American. And in India, we have so many kinds, you know. Doesn't matter. All those differences don't matter. It is neither male nor female, Jew or Gentile, doesn't matter, slave or free, doesn't matter. All those differences don't matter. It's by faith because it's by grace. God's grace is given so that your faith can receive it. You got faith? Come in, receive it. 
Are you a human being? God has shown you grace through Jesus Christ. You can receive it by faith. It's by grace and through faith. So that not just Abraham's descendants. Just imagine how hard it will be for us to get that blessing if it was only to Abraham's descendants. God made it by grace and faith so that we can all get it. Now I don't have to become a descendant of Abraham. Now in the old days, in the Old Testament days, you know, people, some of the people uh, that saw the Jewish people as they lived in various countries were attracted by some features of the Jewish life. For example, every seventh year there was a forgiveness of debt among the Jewish people. If a man has borrowed and is not able to pay and he's become poor and he's struggling, he's unable to pay it, uh, the Bible says, forgive him. <laughs> Read Deuteronomy chapter 15, forgive him. And you say, well, if everybody borrows and I forgive, what will happen to me? That also answer is given. God says, if you forgive him, I'll bless the work of your hand so that you will not borrow, but you will lend to many nations. I'll make you that kind of man if you forgive a poor man. Why all this? Because there shall not be any poor among you. If God was ruling a, any country today, there will not be one poor even. That's the will of God. See? God doesn't want any poor. So a system was put in place. So every seven years there was forgiveness. Grand debt cancellation every seven years. Now how many would like to become a citizen there? Now some people are thinking, well let me in there brother, I'll charge all my cards. Seventh year all forget, forgiven. <laughs> I don't know if, there's any, if there's, this has anything to do with the, the American credit card system. You know, if you fail uh, to pay, make payments and you lose your credit card and you lose your credit, you know, it is restored back in seven years. <laughs> seven years, you have bad credit. Nobody will lend to you and you won't be able to borrow and all that. Seven years later, you know, your record goes off of the bureau <laughs> that reports all these things. You start with a new start. Seven years. That's what they tell me. I don't know if that, that, that has anything to do with it. That's a, that's a very nice feature, you know. So the Gentiles liked it, but they couldn't uh, get that privilege. The Gentiles that lived among the Jews were not free to use that privilege. You know why? Because they are not Jews. It's only available for the covenant people. It's among them. The Bible says in Deuteronomy, if your brother borrows from you, don't, don't get it back from him. If, if a foreigner borrows from you, take it back, it says. <laughs> so they were happy to lend to the foreigners, you know. And, and the foreigners liked it. So some of the foreigners inquired about how to become a Jewish citizen, how, how to become a, a citizen of the commonwealth of Israel. So what they did was, some of them said, well, you got to go through this old ritual of circumcision. It's a very difficult thing. It's a physical thing, you know. A lot of pain involved, bloodshed involved, and all of that. And it, it says that some of them, large numbers of them, went through circumcision in order to become a Jew so that they can have the privilege of the seventh year forgiveness of debts. That is how in the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost when it talks about all the Jews coming from various parts of the world gathering in Jerusalem, remember? It mentions that there were also those who became Jews from all over the world that have come. Quite a large number have converted to become Jews because of these privileges, you know. But just imagine us going through this whole thing, you know. I said this to point out to you, if it was not by grace and through faith, we'll have to go through the same procedure, circumcision, go through the whole rigmarole of going through the Ten Commandments and the whole training and all of that and become a Jew officially and, and all of that, you know, to get Abraham's blessing, you know, even that, even after that, I don't know if it's possible or not, you know. God is so gracious, God said, none of that stuff. I make you Abraham's seed. <laughs> it is not only for those who are his seed physically, but it is also for those who are of the faith of Abraham. And I belong to the faith of Abraham. Therefore, I have the blessings of Abraham. I don't need all these other requirements. God has qualified. That is why it is by grace and through faith. Amen. 
At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there. 